Our first objective is to cover the sciatic nerve in this schematic, which was created by Dr. Bo Foreman from the Department of uh, Physical Therapy in the College of Health. He and I were in grad school together. It's one of the coolest things that he created. Um, so to begin to draw, to understand the sciatic nerve, let's take a look first at a, a cutaneous view of the anterior surface of the right lower limb and then the posterior cutaneous fields of the right lower limb in a posterior view and of the plantar surface of the foot and then cross section through the thigh cross section through the leg both on the right side so to begin by drawing the sciatic nerve we need the two components there's Clara Fay kissing Tim Clara Fay has a body Tim has a body Clara Fay's got arms Tim's got arms Clara Fay's got legs Tim's got legs and then we need to draw feet on there as well and because Tim's a guy he has an extra appendage. And at the tips of each of these lines, we need to put a sensory and a motor component. Sensory, motor. At the tips of each of these, sensory, motor, sensory, motor, and then finally, motor on that extra appendage. So clarifase stands for common fibular nerve, also known as the common pronial. And the sensory component of the common fibular nerve is the lateral sural nerve, which is cutaneous sensation to the lateral part of the leg. The motor component is simply the short head of the biceps femoris that comes off that linea aspera. The word common means, uh, whenever you see the word common, you know it's going to bifurcate. And so the first, one of the branches is the superficial fibular nerve, also known as superficial peroneal. Its sensory distribution is the lateral part of the leg and the dorsum of the foot in that manner. Its motor component is the lateral leg compartment muscles, the pronius longus, pronius brevis. And now the other branch is the deep fibular nerve or the deep peroneal nerve. Its sensory distribution is simply the first web space between the great and second toe. Its motor distribution is the muscles of the anterior leg compartment, tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus. There's your common fibular nerve. Now the tibial nerve is going to have uh, in the thigh the following branch, the medial sural nerve, which is the um, cutaneous distribution along the back of the leg and the lateral part of the foot. And then the motor distribution is the posterior thigh compartment muscles, your hammies, uh, long head of the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus. There's also um, a motor limb uh, branch to the posterior leg muscles, both superficial and deep, so gastroc soleus, tibialis posterior, flexor halsus longus, flexor digitorum longus, and popliteus muscles, and that little plantaris. Um, the tibial nerve at the tarsal tunnel is going to bifurcate, um, and one of its branches is called the medial plantar nerve that courses along the medial plantar surface of the foot where it gives rise to some of its sensory distribution, primarily. Its motor division is the one laugh muscle, so the intrinsic foot muscle. So the first lumbar called the abductor hallucis muscle, flexor hallucis brevis, flexor digitorum brevis. Now, whether or not for this unit you remember that, I don't really don't care, but I thought it just for completeness sake, put it in there. The other branch of the tibial nerve at the, just after it goes through that tarsal tunnel is called the lateral plantar nerve. And it gives rise to a sensory component on the lateral plantar surface of the foot. And its motor dis distribution is to the rest of the foot muscles. So there you have every branch. Well, the tibial nerve is going to have levels that arise from L4 to S3 ventral rami, whereas the common fibular only has branches from the L4 to S2 levels.